welcome to Living on the Ocean. This is the last episode of our trip back from the Caribbean. In our first episode, we left our war on the 18th of March. Cheryl never really sailed before in the ocean and twilight wasn't ready. And then, we couldn't stay in the Canaries, we weren't allowed and we had to go into the ocean. It was fantastic, but not knowing where we could go and no island in the Caribbean allowing us to arrive and even answering us was very frustrating and difficult. In world lockdown, St. Martha gave us safe haven. And it was a very unique experience to be there and to see the effects of COVID-19 on the island there. We had to leave St. Martin. We couldn't stay there with hurricane season coming. We had to find our way back to Europe. And on this trip we did not have west winds. We had lots of squalls, lots of periods with no wind. We had lots of Portuguese men of war with memories of another trip I made myself solo in 2016. But eventually we made it to Horta in the Azores, where again we had to be in quarantine, but what a unique experience there. Horta had opened up as a safe haven, a harbour where yachts already come for decades and paint pictures of their trips on the walls. It was closed, but the yachts had to stop somewhere after crossing an ocean, and with the efforts of the people from Peter Café Sport and all the marina people and the maritime police. We were able to stay on our boat and not disembark and food and anything else we needed was brought towards us with a little yellow boat from Peter Café Sport. A unique experience and for as far as I know the only place in the world where yachts were helped this well. And now in the last episode, episode 8 of this series crossing the Atlantic in world lockdown time. We have to do another thousand miles to mainland Europe. Thousand miles, that's ten times sailing from the Netherlands to England. That's not just a short distance. It looks short if you just have done seven and the total trip of eight. But all kind of things can happen and above all, we do not know if we have to go back in another time quarantine. Using some of the real footage that we made on this trip, where we talked about what was happening with the feelings at that moment and not spoken in like I'm doing now afterwards. I hope that you can appreciate that, even when the quality isn't always the way it should be. But it will give you the real feel of what we were feeling on this fantastic trip. Supreme reaching! Ground reaching! With the west wind! For the first time! It is unbelievable, but if you look at the waves, they're really following us. We're going with them. What a difference. We're doing about the same speed as we used to do up with, but there's no slam. Last island of the Azores that will be coming near. Slowly to disappear into the distance. We're on our way to mainland Portugal. Fantastic start and fantastic winds. We left the islands of the Azores and we're now heading into that open bit of ocean to go for. But once I sailed here and I went over a massive tree trunk, luckily enough, not with too much speed and had no damage, that made you realize you may be almost back, but you're not home before you've dropped your anchor or tied up on your mooring. But for now, fantastic winds and following seas, a great time to sail and a real enjoyment, probably the best of this complete Atlantic trip. This is so wonderful, this is what I truly enjoy. It's relaxed and I'm checking out the boat and I'm observing the rudder, as he's coming partly out of the water when the swell picks us up a bit. It's great that we extended her on St. Martin, she's steering great. And the sail has been doing great for us, even when we had no winches, not to raise it, not to control it, but it worked. I'm really happy with this boat, I'm really happy with everything she endured. 
because she went through a lot more than we planned her for already. We enjoyed it for as long as it lasted. We knew from the weather forecast that the weather would change in the middle and we could see the clouds were coming. Last night we used the engine to motor through this cloudy mess with no wind and rain. And then now it finally, the wind found the hole in this cloud and it's giving us finally wind. In the distance I can see bigger white waves so there will be even more wind. And here comes the famous question. If you think about reefing, you should reef. I must say I'm thinking about reefing, so I should. But very quickly I can roll away the foresail, which you cannot see. And I can run with this wind in the right direction, which will reduce the force quite a lot. Since the boat is far underpowered, I'm not too worried. The waves are not too crazy either. A big gust of wind will not make waves, it will actually more blow it flat. It's really special to be able today to share an adventure like this with so many of you by just taking your telephone and taking little shots like this. I always thought that it would be kind of an obligation taking away from the fun of just enjoying what you're doing. And it will be if we would start doing things we do not do normally. But we will try on this channel, living on the ocean, to really keep it the way it is. The beautiful moments, and sometimes the absolutely not beautiful one. So here I am sitting in my boat, a bit bummed out, tired, tired from thousands and thousands of miles. And actually never really finding rest. This wasn't a restful ocean trip, the way I like it. It was trying to get somewhere. And always struggling with the idea where are we gonna get new food, where are we gonna get new water. Have you been in very bad weather? No. Have you got in any big storms? No. But day in, day out, slamming, banging, rolling around, holding on, gets, gets to you. It's like somebody is hammering on your wall the whole day through. I can just tell you all the nice things about sailing, how fantastic it is. But sometimes it's just wondering why in the world you do it. And then other days you do not want to change it for anything in the world. So, yes, I won't change it for anything. And sometimes I wish I would never even started it. We have not seen any problem to our skin due to the salt. We catched rainwater and basically used our canoe. My next step would be uh, getting the water tanks in the side floats working. They can each hold 400 liters, but actually the idea is to put 200 liters in each tank and then pump the water from port to starboard depending upon how we're sailing to balance the boat out. And now the wind has picked up again. And the sea has grown as well. The waves, they're still coming from behind and we're doing great fantastic speed. We're a little bit less conservative as we won the whole trip because we know we're getting closer to the Portuguese coast. Thank you. Hey. She made all the food all the time. Holding on to a pan where we're doing accelerations of 30 knots at the moment. Average 9 knots over 2 hours. We did 17.85 miles in 2 hours. Well, that's actually 0.15 miles under an average of 9. Top speed 13.8 knots. I'm very pleased. It's so nice to build something and see it do so well. I wouldn't keep all this sail up, we're still on full sail. I would have kept this sail up if we were far away from home, but then 300 miles is still not close by. It's awesome to make something, to alter something. 
I made this boat from 32 foot 41 feet by putting 3 meters in between. She was only a 32 feet boat when I bought her in Key West, Florida and sailed the solo across the ocean. The first thing I did was making a little wheelhouse, a dock house in which I could shelter because she had nothing. She was a flat deck boat for 5,000 miles on the ocean that time. In Portugal I put 3 meters in between her hulls and started to make an aft cabin in 2017. Now that was a very big job. Laminating everything again to make it strong enough. And then when the main hull was done, the side hulls, the floats had to be cut and had to be lengthened as well. The beam had to be moved off and the third beam had to be put in the middle. It all worked out as you could see. And she sails fantastic. But she needs to be finished. She needs to get a mizzen mast and become that catch that I want with more sail area to sail her. But all small sails so she stays an easy boat to control. Yes, she will be faster now she's a bit longer. But I just want to keep sailing with small sails because it's simply easy and you won't break something fast on the ocean. The extended construction and the beams, it all showed it did very well when we were beating up the waves in the middle of the Atlantic. Now we are sailing with those quite big waves even when it's hard to film. It's hard to show with a camera how big waves are, but sailing with them is much less force on the boat. And the speeds is up fantastic, and many times we go over 10 knots. I love sailing with a multi-hull, broad reaches, downwind, she's just doing wonderful on this little bit of foresail. Leaving a nice weight behind, going up and down, up and down. It's not always the easiest for the rudder. And beam reach is already a lot better. We actually now have gone to beam reaching as we can see on our very sophisticated wind indicator. A piece of wool thread on the stay. It's all I need. It sails more relaxed beam reach and the miles simply pass away. The sun's gone down and I can go for a nap while Cheryl is keeping watch. Our favorite wash position, sitting on the edge of the sink, which is built intentionally so to sit there in this little cockpit that we built. That's one of the first improvements to this boat, to sit inside and have a perfect look around with all the windows. To keep warm after I boiled it. You did what? <laughs> My, I sat and plugged the kettle to keep warm because it was metal. Uh, well, we can see it's not too warm anymore. No. Having a hat on and a big scarf and a woolly jumper. Blanket. <laughs> and a blanket over your legs. <laughs> and drinking hot coffee. Less than 50 miles to go. To the blue flag, Cabo San Vicente, the corner of the Algarve, almost back to the green dot, Alvor, where we left this year, the 18th of March, and crossed all the way to the Caribbean. Our plan? Calling the authorities and hope that our paperwork from the Azores, which is Portugal, will allow us to go back to our mooring, and that we do not have to go back in quarantine. This is where we left Portugal on the 18th and sailed to the Canaries and then took this big loop when we couldn't go anywhere else. And here we started making our emails, trying to find a place, an island that would let us come in. And when we didn't get any responses, we wanted to go up here to Bermuda, but then we got notice from St. Martin. They were willing to give us safe haven. There we stayed, had a fantastic time and went up. But Storm Arthur didn't allow us to go any farther, we had to stay down here, we were advised to do so. And that was probably very good. But with that, we also lost all the west wind. After Arthur, there was no more west wind. And we got so far up north eventually, that we even considered to go to Nova Scotia. An area of no wind kept on following us, and every time we tried to motor out, but there was no way for us to get away from it. And that's where we had absolutely no wind or squalls. 
We made a great little trailer video of that that can be found on our channel Living on the Ocean. But we made it to the Azores, we made it to Horta. And from Horta, we're now in this last episode, in exactly seven days, making it back to the Algarve. We look underneath the boom, and there's a sailboat. We didn't see it come before. It's always necessary to keep a watch, especially when we come closer to the coast like this. You can see we're almost, almost there. The laundry had to be done. Something needed to be not salty, not smelly. So we can go out tonight and celebrate that we did 8,000 miles. We just heard that Portugal is back open. On a trip from the Azores to here, the last leg of this 8,000 miles, Portugal opened up again. Sorry for the hair in my face. I hope you enjoyed our adventure. We are back in the Algarve after 8,000 miles in three months. Going to the Caribbean for a rum coke. It helped, it was lockdown time. I would never have kept Cheryl on my boat all this time, but she couldn't get off. Sorry all you guys that wanted to do this, you missed the opportunity. Yes, we did it, we are back. We are passing Cabo San Vicente, the most south-westerly corner of mainland Europe. I must say, my feet are in the water, and this is not the same temperature as the water in the Caribbean. This is good old freezing old golf water. What a beautiful coast! And how nice to be back! It's indeed fantastic! That Atlantic wind is just coming over this corner of mainland Europe, giving us a wind from the land with not much waves, but with a fantastic speed, accelerating twilight to do an average of 10 knots. We covered the last 20 miles in 2 hours. And I made a little trailer video, a smashing end to an 8,000 mile trip, which is on our channel. We're now zooming past Ponte de Pidada, with all its caves. Many, many tourists show up here in the summer to go inside, to row around them. It's absolutely fantastic. But for me, coming around this corner means now I need to start sailing up into this wind. And she's doing it. If you look behind us, there's not even much leeway. Twilight. After we've altered her on the ocean, she's sailing even without a daggerboard. Straight for the entrance of Alvor. Straight back home. We are there! Get ourselves into the entrance of Alvor! No slamming of the boat anymore. No noise of passing water after 8,000 miles. This was absolutely a trip never to be forgotten. And to make videos of it and share them with you all was absolutely fantastic. A lot of work but so nice to do. Made especially nice with all your nice comments, reactions and the subscriptions to our channel which have been very encouraging to us. Thank you all so much.